Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping in, another little quick chat. Now, here's the thing, what you got to realize, this one thing I understand as a man, and it's, it's some women who kind of get it, but one of the things that I realize is one thing that a man understands, and it's, it's innate, a man understands that a woman comes from a man, meaning we think about sometimes we think about the fact that a woman carries the child for 10 months and gives birth and you know how the first four weeks you don't know and then the nine months or what have you nine ten months that a woman carries a child and gives birth and so we always say you know women give birth and everything comes from the woman but when you think about it spiritually, the way we learned about the human race is that a woman was made from a man. And before that happened, the man was put on earth and given dominion of the earth. And so when you really get down to it, what you'll find is that most women want a man to be in their life and to kind of take the lead, meaning to provide for the household, to have an opinion, to know who he is, to know what he wants, to know where he's going. Most women want a man who, if she says something or does something that he doesn't agree with, that he gives some pushback. No woman wants to be, you know, hit on or spit on or cursed out. No woman in her right mind. But she wants to know this man has a backbone. That if he's back into the corner by life, he'll, he'll come out swinging. That he's going to do what he has to do. That he has ambition. He has confidence. And that he's willing to take life by the horns and do what he has to do to make it happen. Most women want that. Here's the thing. Most men know that. But the thing about it is, in our world, it's been perverted. So, God's original intention was for a man to protect the woman, provide for this woman, to love this woman, and to cherish her the way God loves and cherishes her. So God made a woman with an innate submissive nature, uh, an innate submissive uh, nature, desire to want to give a man his space to lead, be the head of the household. And now we have... You know, we have on the other side to where people hate the word lead. People hate the word submission. And I get it. But the reason why the hate has come with that, with those words, is because of the perversion of those words. So now, so many men, instead of leading, they dominate. See, to lead, it's just like having a group leader. It's just like being on a tour and having a leader. It's just like being in a classroom and having the teacher's assistant or having the teacher. It's just like being the captain on a soccer team, on a football team. It doesn't mean that you're better than anybody. It means that you just are the one who, the messages come from you. Even if you sit down and you collaborate, you announce it to everybody else. The idea could be somebody else's. And so it's just being the forefront. It's being, you know, speak to my husband. It's when the man come to fix something around the house, talk to, talk to my husband. When there's an issue at the grocery store, the issue with a business, there's an issue with, at the schoolhouse, my husband coming in here. My husband is my backup. It's just that type of thing to where it's supposed to be teamwork and not this domineering tyrant. And so that's where it has been perverted to where a lot of men who don't understand the essence of leadership and don't understand that leadership is service, they have perverted it and they make leadership domination. So to them, it's shut up, sit down, what I say goes. And that's not the case. To where really you're a team, to where this whole move, this whole idea may come from the woman because she is equal, she is capable, she has a mind, she sees life differently, she has a different perspective, so the whole idea on this next move may come from the woman. And then what the man does is he confirms, hey, I, I agree with that. Let's do that. And he may take charge and he may enact the plan, but it comes from her. 
And so what has happened is today is men know that women have a weakness for us. Men know that. Men know that women are in a place to where women know and understand. Oh, that was my, my cleaning guy. So now uh, men know that women want and desire a relationship that most women want a man to be the head of the household to take charge to lead to to be the forefront to be the front line none of this has to do with being dominated or controlled now some women who've been broken who have lost their way they want a man to dominate and control because they've lost the essence of who they are but i'm speaking on the healthy sense so for the extreme feminists don't don't try to take and twist this and make this something that it's not. I'm talking about when you fill out your taxes and it's a head of household, that's what I'm talking about. Meaning that it's just the name. It's just how the woman takes on, the woman and the kids takes on the man's last name. That's what I mean. To where it, you just the front line. If it's any swords coming, you there as the shield. And a lot of women want that from a man. And men know that. But the thing is, is it's been perverted and women oftentimes don't realize that there's a thin line between a man leading and a man dominating. And so now this man, he knows he has control. He knows that people like me can get out of the simulation and break free and come out and let you know you're in the matrix. This the red pill, this the blue pill. You got a choice to make. I ain't never seen the movie. I'm just using it in my own way. And you got a choice to make. Here's the knowledge. Here's the knowledge to understand that this man needs you more than you need him. Or just as much as you need him. This man wants you just as much as you need as you want him. But if you don't know your worth and if you don't know who you are and you don't know what you bring to the table... He could see that because he has a poker face and he could see that you folded. He could see that you desperate. He could see that you lonely. He could see that you frustrated and he's going to play on your weaknesses. If he has any weakness in him, the weakness in him will be brought out and he will be insecure, immature and weak and he will play on your weaknesses. And so because you're desperate for love, because you're desperate to change your Facebook status from single to in a relationship to marry, because you're desperate to send out wedding invitations and be able to invite your haters, a couple of your haters, so they could see that you got married before they got married or you got married just like they've got married or now you're engaged just like all your classmates are engaged or have kids with your husband and not just a child's father. You could take vacations and go to Tahiti with your husband and not just your situationship. He can sense when you're desperate for that showcase. And he'll play on that. And this is what men know. Men know that we can go out and cheat on a woman, have a break baby, have a side baby. Men know that we can tell a woman we need a break, tell a woman we need to grow, tell a woman we need time with God, tell a woman we need to be alone, tell a woman we're not ready for a relationship, tell a woman that, you know, we ain't ready to settle down, tell a woman that she rushing marriage, that she rushing, she forcing a relationship, that we could tell a woman anything and she's going to rationalize in her mind, give us an excuse, give us an out, and then tell us, okay, and then come to me, should I wait? Should I take my ex back? Should I forgive him for having a baby on me? Should I forgive him for cheating on me? He cheated on me multiple times. And I get so many messages from women that's been with a deadbeat man for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. Men know that. Men know that I could literally write a relationship Bible, meaning a complete book with an Old Testament and a New Testament that's only about relationships. And men know that women will read every word in that Bible, in that relationship book, and still do the complete opposite. And that women will spend thousands of dollars going to seminars, reading books, taking courses, and still be in fornication. 
Still take back a dog. Still take back a no good man. Men know that. So that's why men, honestly, that's why they don't bother me. Because they know I'm not a threat. They know that I'm not stopping anything. Men get pride out of their woman listening to me and him still being able to dog her out and get away with mess. That's what men know. Men know that I could talk until I'm blue in the face. I could go from this color to this color on my shirt. And men know that nine out of 10 women still going to be weak for a man. I talk to women every day, all day long, and they still go and do the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. I see women who with a deadbeat, no good man and will tell them, this is what you need to do. They will go and do the opposite. And this man don't have no good intentions for them. Don't love the woman. Don't care for the woman. I'm a man, so I can see it clearly. And I know, and the woman will still be there. Be a floor mat. Be a punching bag. Be his lap dog. Be his do girl. And this is what men know. And here's the thing what women don't know. And I need to do another. Well, I done talked about this several times. Is women don't know that you're going to get whatever you say you want out of life. That you're going to get whatever you settle for in life. So if you settle for a man that is not the man, that he's not like that, that this is not the man that's going to be romantic, that's going to be faithful, that's going to talk to you with respect, that's going to treat you with respect, that this is not the man. If you settle for him and tell yourself that, oh, he could grow, oh, he could change, oh, he could is, and it's past one year, two years, three years, you are settling, you are losing, you are lost, you are broken, you are confused, and you have to wake up. You have to wake up. You got to hit the reset button. You got to start to love yourself. You have to know who you are. You have to understand your position in the world, where, why you were called, why you are here, and you have to stand up for what you want, for who you are, for what you believe, and when you do that, this man has to step up in your life or step out of your life. Point blank, period, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And that's what you have to understand. But see, men know that we have the code to a woman's heart. We have the cheat code in more ways, more uh, meaning to the word than one. We got the cheat code. We know how to program a woman's mind. We know how to program a woman's heart. We know how to cheat on a woman and get her to forgive us. We know how to put hands on a woman and get her to forgive us. We know how to do that. Nine out of 10 women. But guess what? It's those, it's those women. It's those women who choose to believe in who they are to believe their worth, to believe in the destiny that God has set for them. It's those women right there that break the code, that break the matrix. It's those women that get a man to be a protector and a provider in every sense of the word, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially. It's those women who, if they have to cry in the dark all night long, They'll do that, but they will not let that man see them or hear them sweat. They will not break for a man. They will not let a man run in and out of their life, curse them out, talk down to them, cheat on them, disrespect them. And if they have to be alone for the rest of their life, those women are willing to bet on themselves. And those are the women that end up with the happy, loving marriage. Those are the women that take a grown boy and this grown boy has to become a grown man because she refused to settle and she refused to reinforce negative behavior. Those are the women. Guess what? That's why Cherie Gaskins has the life that she has because she's one of those women. And I get to meet some of those women and I get to see how this man has changed for this woman. We don't change for ourselves. That's the power that a woman has that women don't understand. Men don't change for themselves. If men change for themselves, 
then you will see millionaires and billionaires perfect if they change for themselves. If money really meant success, then millionaires and billionaires wouldn't be committing suicide. They wouldn't be going through divorce. They wouldn't be unhappy. They wouldn't be self-medicating so much if money meant happiness. If success in money meant that a man has become a real man and he's changed and he's perfected himself, then there would not be any unhappiness at the highest level of success. But look at the men that you know that are worth tens of millions, hundreds of millions or billions, and they're still single. They're still sleeping around. They're still going from woman to woman. They can't make a relationship work. They can't make a marriage work. Look at it because it does not mean anything to have money and to have worldly fame, notoriety, and success if you don't change on the inside. But the men who change and grow, it is always, you never meet a man who is all the way where he needs to be in his life without having a woman in his life. And that's what men try to, men want to convince ourselves of that. But if that was possible, if that was meant to be, if that was the, the idea, then God would have never created Eve. But God, who is perfect, created a man and looked at this man and saw him moving around and said, this man is not complete. This man cannot be alone. This man is not meant to be here alone. I have to create. Whoa, man. From his womb, from his rib, I have to lay him to sleep. And I have to breathe life into this woman from him because he cannot be alone. That's what God said, who is perfect. So if God made man to stand alone, then he would not have created a woman. He would have left man to the world with the animals. But he created a woman because he knew and understood that the creation wasn't complete until he had created the other half so that them two could come together and we could be fruitful and replenish the earth and we could be a team and we could work together and we could build together. That's what God, the all knowing knew that he had to complete his creation. And so I have never met a man who is single and everything that a man should be. I have never met a man who does not have a woman in his life and in a loving relationship that I fully respect as a man, that I would truly take full advice from. Like a lot of times I see billionaires and I see multimillionaires who worth tens of millions. And, and I could look at them and because I now understand manhood, I look at them and I could see their brokenness. I could see their flaws. I could see their voids. And I have no desire to reach out to them for mentorship. I have no desire. Because I see the part that's hardest for us to control, that part is lacking. That my first prerequisite for me seeking a mentor is he has to be in a loving marriage. Because I understand as a man that until men learn how to love a woman the way God created her to be loved, then he's not a man. I don't care if he makes fifty hundred thousand billion dollars if he does not know how to create to treat god's other creation he is not a man until he can get one woman and be faithful to her understanding that god did not create her heart to be shared with other women that god did not create her to settle and to be treated like nothing and to be disrespected so until he learns how to love her, cherish her, and treat her as the one and only, he's not a man. And this is what men deny. This is what men don't want to believe. And this is why men who are happily married have more peace than those who are single. This is why the studies show that men who are happily married live on average 20 years longer and make 20 to 40% more money over their lifetime because there is peace, there is unity, there is a bond, there is a covenant, and is what the creator intended. But see, this is what men know about women, and this is what has been perverted, and that's why women are suffering at the hands of men, because men know they have the cheat code to a woman's heart. But until women wake up and realize that, 
Women will always be dogged out, cheated on, and mistreated until you come into your knowledge and your power. And what men don't know is that we need a woman to complete the cipher. We need a woman in our life to help us go to the next level because she is that confirmation that comes from the head, that comes from God, that will take us to the level that he has for us because he understands that we can't get all the way to where we need to be without having that union and being able to replenish the earth, being it with love or with reproducing. And the, the examples that we see of that, they're in the Bible. Apostle Paul and Jesus Christ, the only single men that we know of that did not have some form of union. And today we in a new day to where the laws are different. You can't have multiple wives under God in Christianity. Can't have multiple wives, can't sleep around, can't be fornicating. And if you cannot be abstinent, celibate, and doing the work of God, it, now you can reach the fullness as a man if you're celibate, doing the work of God, living your God-given purpose, and you're celibate. You cannot be full as a man if you are using women to put them on their back and you're emptying yourself into them, but you're not married to this woman with a covenant under God. You are misusing God's creation and you are misusing the intention and the purpose of sex. And so, you cannot be a full man if you're misusing the tool and the medium that God has put in place for humans to come together and replenish and fulfill the destiny of the earth. And so that's what men have to understand. And that's what men fail to realize and to accept. And a man wants to believe that he is all a man and he's 100 percent a man without a woman. And that's the lie because you wouldn't even be here had it not been for a woman. So your daddy couldn't even bring you into the world had it not been for a woman completing his cipher, had it not been for him being able to lie down with a woman. So how can you be 100% a man if you wouldn't even be here had it not been for the union with a woman? And that's what men got to understand. So listen to me. God bless you. I got to go. My AC man here, he blowing my phone up. And I'm um, trying to fix my, my gym, AC. Listen to this two more times. Get this in your spirit. And you can argue with it all you want to. But when you sit down and you get I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. So if, if a man want to pull up and you want to you wanna compare peace, if you want to compare peace and prosperity, we could do that. We could go in depth on it. Okay? And if you're a woman, look at your life and look, what, look how happy and peaceful or frustrated and miserable that you are, evaluate your life. And, and when you really sit down with this here message and you listen to it two or three times objectively, not looking to critique and to argue just because it offended your truth, then you're going to see where I'm coming from and you're going to understand. I'm speaking from the place on the mountain that has experienced this union and this peace and this happiness in love with the other half that God created for me. So until you have experienced that fullness in that, you won't even understand fully what I'm talking about. So if you have not experienced it fully, then you can't even really argue with it. But now when you experience it fully, then you're going to see if you desire to be 100% single and alone and complete by yourself. Then you're going to see. And then you're going to understand why God created man and woman. And not just woman alone and not just man alone. It is Tony Gasson. God bless you. We'll talk soon.